Over the past two weeks, I've been on a mission. And that has been to find out more about the supply and demand of different sources of energy. I wanted to learn about oil. What is making oil prices rise so much? When will we run out of oil? I wanted to learn about alternative energy. What is alternative energy and is it becoming more popular? Um, I got to interview a lot of key people in my community and those interviews along with a lot of research have been able to answer all of my questions. As an educator, I play a tremendous role in shaping the youth of our nation. One of the people I got to interview was my social studies teacher, Ms. DiCarlo. No country has had an impact on the global environment as the United States. It has less than 5% of the world population, but it consumes 25% of the world's energy. So I talked to Ms. DiCarlo about this whole situation on a global level. Uh, she compared the United States to other countries across the world when it came to things like gas prices and use of alternative energy. One of the things that's affecting supply and demand of energy, specifically oil, is globalization. And globalization is simply an integrated relationship between countries around the world. Uh, might deal with economic relationships, environmental relationships, cultural relationships. Venezuela and Iran, two oil producing nations, are probably the cheapest uh, at about 17 cents per gallon. South Korea, on the other hand, along with Germany, their governments have put high taxes on gasoline and can pay right now anywhere as high as uh, 6.06 a gallon. So when you look at the prices in the United States, we actually fare pretty well compared to most of the, uh, most of the world. Um, right now, the average is about $4 a gallon for regular gasoline. I wondered if our relationship with oil producing countries in the Middle East was affecting our oil prices. So I got to sit down and talk to the social studies supervisor for my school district, Mrs. Brennan. Basically, I mean, when you take a look at the top 10 oil producing countries, Saudi Arabia, um, Iran and Kuwait are among those top 10 nations. Um, historically, our policy in the United States has been to intervene militarily in those areas of the world where it's significant to our national security con to control oil resources in that particular region. If you take a look at um, the amount of oil that has been produced and the oil prices since we invaded Iraq, you know, the oil production has been reduced and the oil prices have increased significantly. So that military policy is counterproductive. So it doesn't really seem like oil has a lot going for it right now. Its prices are high, it's bad for the environment, and someday we're going to run out. And now seems like a good time to start thinking about using alternative forms of energy. And I got to sit down with a man in my community, Dave Sims, who actually uses 100% solar power and wind power to fuel his home. For dollars spent, the best value that you can get is actually energy auditing and energy efficiency stuff. Worldwide production of solar panels, for example, is a doubling, quadrupling on a very regular basis. I mean, they're, they're stepping up operations as much as they can, but it still takes time to build a plant and get it running right. Uh, the demand is, is right there with supply. I mean, it's increasing, I and mean, they're not projecting that solar use is going to go down or the rate of growth of the industry. When you look at our country today, we're again pushing towards other uses of energy, specifically solar and wind. But it's really the cheaper way of producing energy. Um, interesting that the United States has again, not really gotten on board with the use of solar energy. We are work, working at a solar or maybe wind energy sources. Uh, we're meeting with representatives. Uh, matter of fact, two weeks ago we sat down with representatives to solar companies uh, to try and find ways to uh, get energy through solar, solar purposes. So finally I got to sit down with the mayor of my township, John Devlin, and he told me a lot about what my town was doing to help be more energy efficient. What can we do as a community to help decrease our town's dependence on fossil fuels? Recycling. It's it, it, composting, mulching. Uh, in the case of garbage pickup, we're reviewing one-person trucks, which is the, has a, a robotic arm on it that picks the garbage up. Um, 
by municipalities uh, purchasing salt uh, together. Uh, we're looking at doing shared services where we, we have a group of municipalities going to one location for that salt. Living in the New York area, a big change that I've noticed in the past couple of years has been the amount of carpoolers. Um, the state has added extra lanes just for carpoolers and I think all of it's great. In this country, um, people are starting to get it. I think that we could do a lot to help save money, save the environment, and save energy. But each and every one of us has to be willing to do our own part, and we have to be able to work with others.